Welcome to the sixth annual PRISM Awards for Photonics Innovation. One of the common threads that we have all of us together in this room is a respect for, and in most cases, a serious quest for innovation. SPIE and Photonics Media are delighted to recognize some of the most innovative new products and the companies that build them tonight. To begin the awards, in the gender category of other light sources. We have a technology entrepreneur who, in addition to a PhD from Stanford and several SPI papers and conference proceedings published in the SPI Digital Library, many academic awards, has dozens of patents, but is focused on products, including lasers and spectroscopic equipment, uh, including as a founder and CTO 10 years ago of Picaro. She continues commercializing technology as a partner in VC firm Sky Moon Ventures and co-founded Finesse, Finesse Solutions, where she is CEO, bringing single-use sensors and bioprocessing solutions to market. Please welcome CEO of Finesse Solutions, Barbara Paldus. So first of all, I would like to thank Steve Anderson for the opportunity to uh, introduce this category tonight. And since other lasers is not a particularly descriptive category, I thought that I would start with a little preamble to the history of photonics in general. We all are familiar with the phrase, let there be light. It's a phrase that is metaphorical in meaning about the spreading of knowledge and the dispelling of ignorance. It comes from the third verse of the book of Genesis. And in the King James Bible, it reads, in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth, and the earth was without form and void. The darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light, and God saw the light, and it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Ironically, all of us work with light, so that means that we must be good. From a scientific perspective, 4.5 billion years ago, it was pretty dark and cold out there in the universe. There was no sun, no light, no earth, no solar system. And about 4 billion years ago, through the process of thermonuclear hydrogen fusion, the sun began to shine, and we had light. Life on Earth, and I'm from the bioprocessing industry, began about 3 billion years ago with stromatolites, or, mon or most commonly known as algae. Without light, there would actually be no life. Life was dependent on three things. The first was carbon, the second was water, and the third was light. Fortunately for us, the Earth had all three. Eventually, the oceans formed a rich organic soup that ultimately bore life, and then man. Homo erectus, as we're affectionately called by the archaeologists, came into the picture only about a million years ago. We discovered fire by accident. It was most likely discovered when lightning struck a bush or a tree. The flaming torch in the campfire became our first use of artificial lighting. For the first time, we gained a small degree of freedom from the primordial darkness and some degree of safety from the unseen prowling beasts. The torch became the first portable lamp. We had finally learned to generate light at will, and we were on the path to civilization. Prehistoric man used lamps to illuminate the caves. 15,000 years ago, as archaeologists have found, in Lascaux, France, lamps were made from materials such as rocks, shells, horns, and filled with grease and had a fiber wick. In Japan, interestingly, people caught fireflies and imprisoned them in primitive cages to provide bioluminescent illumination, a source of convenient light. Interestingly, around the same time, people invented the sundial, and for the first time, we could divide our days and months and years into a chronology. And interestingly also, it wasn't until the 18th century that clocks and watches became available. Also, the worship of the sun became part of early civilization. From the earliest days, light was part of religious ceremonies. In pagan temples of the Romans, the Vestal Virgins, for example, tended the everlasting light. 
Apparently, any of the virgins who broke their vow would be buried alive. So it was not a good thing to let that fire out. The invention of the candle dates back to 400 AD. Candles were made out of beeswax for the Roman Catholic Church and the Christian religion. The best candles had basically the symbol of purity associated with them. For the common people, candles were made out of tallow. Light emitting devices at the time were smelly and smoky. They dripped badly and they didn't really give off much light. Initially, science relied on natural light as the source. Abu Ali Muhammad ibn al-Hassan, the Arabian scientist and scholar, first wrote and described optical theory. He studied light, vision, the eye, solar and lunar eclipses, and photonics was born from a scientific perspective. Then in 1877, if we jump further, Thomas Edison filed his first patent for the Edison electric lamp. In 1881, two years after the first incandescent lamp left the workshop, the steamship Columbia was fitted with a thousand of them. Within another two years, there were over 300 electric power stations in the US feeding over 70,000 incandescent lamps, each having, believe it or not, an average life of 100 hours. So if you look at this historical perspective, we have come a long way. The fluorescent lamp was introduced to the public at the New York World Fair in the late 30s, 1937 to be exact. In the 1980s, the compact fluorescent lamp has revolutionized our lighting industry. In the 60s, fiber optics were developed as a means of transmitting messages as an alternative to electrical wires. By 1970, Corning produced the first practical fiber optic cable. And in the 1990s, we were transmitting light more than 20 miles without a repeater. Fiber optics is also used in sensing for automotive, aircraft, and medical equipment. The laser was perfected in 1960. You see, we're getting to 2014 in the PRISM Awards uh, by Maiman. The actual term laser was coined in 1957. Interestingly, at the time, Gordon Gould, who coined the word laser, tried to interest the American defense officials in the development of a potential death ray. But as he was involved in some left-wing political activities in the 40s, the Defense Department, classified his patent application as secret, denied him a security clearance, and confiscated his notebooks. Today, lasers find applications in telecommunications, industrial applications, including cutting, welding, 3D printing, medical, such as therapy, surgery, and of course, hair removal. How could we forget hair removal? Research materials, medicine, spectroscopy, financial transactions. If we all go to the grocery store, the barcode scanners all use lasers. Defense and environmental applications. LEDs were first prototyped in the 60s and are today commonly used as indicators and in lighting applications. The white and blue LEDs came into existence in the 1990s. Like lasers, LEDs have diverse amplifications, including short-haul telecom, microscopy, spectroscopy, agriculture, such as fruit sorting, and today, especially in Denver, indoor growth of marijuana, medical, phototherapy for things like jaundice for babies, and biological waste disposal. In my industry, people build huge bioreactors and illuminate them to basically digest garbage, a great industry of the future and what I would classify as all kinds of cool and otherwise useless gizmos. Keychains, anti-aging devices, all the things you would never buy but you find in the United Airlines duty-free book. So having established that light sources and equipment based on them are not only ubiquitous in and a necessary foundation of our modern society, I'm going to move on to finally introducing my category Namely, those light sources that are meritorious based on their innovative designs and broad applications, but that do not necessarily fit into any of the other more specific categories being presented tonight. My category is therefore simply called Other, as these devices have applications um, that are broad ranging and the candidates cover actually a broad range of photonic technologies. So without further ado, Four years ago, I hit upon an idea, the Wavelengths Tunable Laser for optical communication. To provide a compact and cost-effective universal fluorescence light source, which gives researchers the widest spectrum of wavelengths and the greatest control possible. A reliable, mass manufacturable and cost-effective green laser.
And now for the magic moment where we rip open that envelope and announce the winner, and it is... Nexel! <laughs>